In this uh, section, we'll start with the new biomolecule and that is lipid. Now lipids, as we have seen in the classification, they are microbiomolecules. So first, let us talk about the brief classification of lipids and then we'll take up individual. So we classify them into three main categories as simple lipids, then conjugated lipids, and the third category is of derived lipids or lipid derivatives also. They can be considered as lipid derivatives. When we talk of simple lipids, they are actually esters of fatty acid and alcohol. So we define it as ester of fatty acid and an alcohol. If this alcohol is glycerol, then we will call them true fats or neutral lipids. So here, simple are further divided into two categories as true fats or they are also known as neutral lipids. Now what exactly are neutral lipids? They are esters of fatty acid and glycerol. We will see the structure, formation and everything in detail. The second category is, they are known as waxes. Waxes are also esters. So they are called or they are defined as esters of fatty acid and alcohol other than glycerol. And alcohol other than glycerol. So if it is fatty acid and glycerol, those would be called true fats or simple neutral fats. And if it is fatty acid and an alcohol but other than glycerol, then we keep them under the category of waxes. We will take all of them in detail. Conjugated lipid means the true fats or simple lipids plus something else. So here we would have simple lipids plus a non-lipid part. Now here let us take a couple of examples. One could be phospholipid. As the name tells us there is phosphate group attached with lipid. The next glycolipid where a carbohydrate is associated with lipid. And if it is a protein associated with lipid, then we call it lipoprotein. So here lipid and protein, here carbohydrate, sorry, lipid and protein, carbohydrate and lipid, and here phosphorus and lipid. So along with lipid, there is some non-lipid part. That kind of lipid is conjugated lipid. Now coming to the derivatives. In this, we would take two major groups, that is sterols, under which we would take phytosterol, zoosterol, ergosterol, in which our cholesterol also is going to be discussed. And then next category is of terpenes. So this is how we classify lipids in a brief manner. And we will start with true fats or the structure and how these true fats are formed and what are they made up of. So let us start with the first category that is true fats or neutral lipids. Or neutral lipids. As we have defined them as esters of esters of fatty acid and glycerol. So let us first understand these two things and then we will see how the two things have combined to give us the simple neutral or a neutral lipid or true fat. Fatty acids are long chain hydrocarbons with carboxyl group. 
So they have a long chain of hydrocarbon which we write with R and COOH. These fatty acids are again divided into two categories. So fatty acids can be defined or categorized as non-essential fatty acids and essential fatty acids. We already know what we mean by these two terms. Non-essential means even if they are not present in our diet, it's fine because our body can synthesize them. Essential fatty acids are those which must be present in the diet because our body cannot synthesize them. Now, when we read about these essential fatty acids, sometimes we come across two names and sometimes we come across three names. So we'll see why this difference. The first essential fatty acid is linoleic acid. And this is the one which actually gives us omega-6. The second essential one is known as alpha-linolenic acid. And this is going to give us omega-3. This linoleic acid, that means this one, can get converted into one more uh, fatty acid which is essential for our body. So that third one is archidonic acid. Now why it is coming under essential? Because you cannot synthesize it, our body cannot synthesize it, it must be taken from outside. And in some cases, it is not included in essential because it can be synthesized using this linoleic acid. But it is required, it is an essential fatty acid in our body. So if linoleic acid is less or there is deficiency of linoleic acid, automatically there is going to be deficiency of archidonic acid. So either we take all three, so they come under essential fatty acids. But actually, if we are taking these two in sufficient quantities, linoleic can get converted into archidonic acid. And that is why in some cases we get two names and in some cases we get three essential fatty acids. In the category of non-essential, any other fatty acid other than these three, if are there, they are non-essential. We can synthesize all those fatty acids. Now coming to uh, one more uh, thing about fatty acids. Fatty acids can be saturated or unsaturated. Saturated fatty acids, they have all single bonds. And unsaturated fatty acids, they have double and triple bonds. Double and triple bond. If saturated fatty acid is present in the fat, then the fat will be called saturated fat. And if it is unsaturated fatty acid, then the fat will be termed as unsaturated fat. Now let us see the glycerol molecule. Glycerol is an alcohol and we write it as CH2OH, CHOH, and CH2OH. There are three hydroxyl groups. That means there are three places where the fatty acid can come and bind. So if a fatty acid comes and binds here, this is COOH, then the bond formation would be with elimination of water. This bond is known as ester bond. So how many ester bonds can be formed here? One is formed here, the second can be formed with second hydroxyl group, third can be with the third one. Now how do we represent it? Glycerol is represented by a circle and this is the fatty acid. So this head is glycerol and the tail is fatty acid. Now there is one more very very important thing. Glycerol is hydrophilic whereas 
the fatty acid that is stale is hydrophobic. And when one molecule has one end as hydrophilic and other end, end as hydrophobic, such molecules are termed as amphipathic. So phospholip or oh, sorry, the lipid molecules or the fat molecules, they are actually amphipathic molecules. So here we have drawn one glycerol and there is only one fatty acid attached. The second one is attached to glycerol there are two fatty acids and the third possibility is there are three fatty acids attached. So if there is only one fatty acid attached we would call it monoglyceride fat. Monoglyceride fat. What is there in monoglyceride fat? One glycerol molecule, one fatty acid molecule. This is a diglyceride fat. Diglyceride had one glycerol and two fatty acids. And this is a triglyceride fat. Triglyceride fat. Triglyceride fat has one glycerol and three fatty acid molecules. So depending upon how many fatty acid molecules are attached to glycerol, we can have mono, di and triglyceride. So minimum is one and maximum three fatty acids can attach to it. That means in a monoglyceride fat, there is only one ester bond. In diglyceride, there would be two and in triglyceride, there would be three ester bonds. So here when we talk of True fats or neutral fats, we are talking of glycerol and fatty acids. The alcohol is a glycerol and fatty acids could be saturated or unsaturated and they can also be from any category. They can be essential fatty acids or uh, non-essential fatty acids. So this is how we classify these true fats or neutral fats. Classify in the sense the structure wise. If the fatty acids here are saturated, then the fat would be termed as saturated fat. So here we can have saturated fat. What would be in a saturated fat? It would be glycerol plus saturated fatty acids. And unsaturated, unsaturated fat would have glycerol plus unsaturated fatty acids. How do we differentiate between the two? Saturated fats are solid at room temperature. Solid at room temperature. Whereas unsaturated are liquid. We can understand this by a simple example. Saturated fat, one example is ghee. And unsaturated is oil. So oil normally remains liquid at room temperature whereas ghee solidifies. So that is one simple method by which we can identify saturated and unsaturated fat. So here we can add the example as ghee and here the example would be oil. So this is just to remember the difference between the two. Now we will take up the functions of these fats and the second category of simple fats that is waxes in the next category or oh, sorry in the next video.